And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, Spike is the game we're taking a look at today. The first time I saw Spike, it was at Essen, and I kind of glanced at it and thought, huh, looks like a uh, light ticket to ride, didn't think much of it, but I probably should have put more thought into it because it's from r, &R Games and designed by Stephen Glenn, who's done a great job at bringing party and family games to the market. Um, but, you know, I didn't have a chance to play it. Finally got a copy of it and said, all right, let's, let's look this over and see how it plays. And I was really surprised. It played very differently. It may look like Ticket to Ride, but it plays like a very different style game. Let me show you. Now the goal of this game is to get the most money. You can see that each player has a track here and you're going to be moving it around the board getting money and you're going to be spending that money by building track. You start with a train on the board and as the game progresses you're going to be building a track on the board that this train will then be moving on that track. Choo -choo. And you'll have one track that might branch off and such but it's going to be one track that you're building around the board. Now each person is going to be, they're going to start with this train here. This means that when they move their train, they can move it one space, and when they draw cards, they can draw two cards. However, as the game progresses, you can upgrade your train so it can move two or three spaces. You can upgrade it so that you draw three or four cards. And also, this is a cargo car. You can ha add extra cars to your train so that you can carry more goods. Each player is also going to get three different goods. These are the goods that they can transport over the course of the game. You simply put them here on top of the train when you're carrying it, which is actually a pretty cool visual effect. And you're going to get cards for those. Now, there are multiple cards for each item in the game. The way you do this at the beginning of the game, you shuffle up. There's 12 different goods. You shuffle up the cards for each of the 12 different goods and then randomly pick one. So there's multiple oil cards. And then you give these out to each person, three of them. So I have these three and someone else might have it will have a different three maybe they have oranges cattle and pigs and when you get these you take them on the side that they are because the sides on them are different or you can play a little bit more of a strategic game and just pick which side you're going to put them out on players are also going to have a card that's randomly drawn that shows a route this means they need to connect nashville to one of these cities and the farthest city that they have it connected to is going to give them points at the end of the game these cards say that if I deliver cotton to these cities, that's how much money I'm going to get. So you can see here that delivering cotton, uh, if I want to deliver it to Boston, I'm going to get $14. 15 if I deliver it to Green Bay, while I get $8 if I deliver it to Jacksonville. So players are going to, that's kind of how the game is set up. On a player's turn, first of all, if their train's already moving, it will move again automatically on their tracks. So once you get your tracks built up, your trains can move automatically if you started them moving in a previous turn. And they'll just keep moving till you decide to stop. Uh, many times you're going to stop in a city and drop goods off. And when you do that, if you have the goods, you will take a little check mark and put it on a card. So let's say I delivered um, this bag of flour to St. Paul. I put a check there. I can never deliver to St. Paul for the rest of the game, even one of my other goods. And, but I still can deliver to the other ones on this card and I would get $5. So on my turn, there are multiple things I can do. Like I said, first you move your train if it's already been moving. Then, if your train's in a city, you can start it moving as your turn, and it will move as far, and then it will just keep moving till you basically tell it to stop or till you run out of track. Or you can build track. Now, when you build track, you have to follow some rules. You have to build, you have to connect one city to another city. That's always important. You can't just build track halfway. And when you build track to a city, you look at the good in that city, and let's say I went to a city with coal, I'm going to get $3 for connecting that city, and then coal moves to the bottom of this chart up here. These are the 12 different goods in the game. To connect trains, or to put trains on the board, I have to play cards. So in this instance, I'm putting it on a red, a red, and now let's say a black line there. So I'd have to play two red track cards and a black line track card, which are up here. And you can also see that they're in different direction. All the red tracks go one way, all the black tracks go one way, etc. And they also have different dotted lines and such for colorblind people to tell which trains are which. So another action you can do is take cards. You can take from these face up ones, 
or you can take from the face down pile. What's really neat about this game is if I want to build on a red line and I don't have red cards, I can use other cards as long as I use one more than the number of lines I need. So to build one red, I could play two whites. If I want to build two reds, I could play three whites. And so that will con that's one of the, those are two of the main features of the game is taking cards and then placing tracks on the board. Well, let's get this out of the way. I highly enjoy this game, very much approve of it. This game is reminiscent of the Cran Rail games that mostly are produced by Mayfair Games. Uh, I've played the Cran Rail games in the past and I like them a lot. Basically, in those games, you draw a track on the board, you pay money, you get different things, and you're moving these little trains back and forth. And it's an excellent game, but it's very long and doesn't really play, in my opinion, very well with more than three because it's so long between turns. This game, Spike, is as if Mr. Glenn took those games and said, how can I make these games accessible to a greater number of players? As much as I like the Cran Rail games myself, they just aren't really attractive to people. They don't look good. They're, they, they can be difficult to get into and kind of mind-bending. This is the same thing in essence, except the pieces are cooler and it's not as complex. It has a lot of the same things where you upgrade the trains, um, where you are delivering goods to different cities. But th this fixes some of the problems. One, your trains keep moving. You can build trains, move your trains at the same time, and it's faster and easier to do. Secondly, the goods are very easy and you can do forward planning. You can say, okay, I'm going to go here, here, here. In fact, I, unless you're playing with like people who are new to gaming or a light family game, I would always play where you can um, basically draw two destinations at the beginning, pick which one you want to do. Um, and also when you get your commodities, pick which side. So you can take, you know, maybe five minutes or so at the beginning of the game and say, okay, this is the general route I'm going to try to do over the course of this game. But you're watching other people. Where are they connecting? How are they going? Are, they, are you going to have to go around them here with the track? Is that worth doing? Um, what's your best bet to move at this time? When should you upgrade? See, I think maybe you should get more cards, but a faster train is a definite. You need to at least get your train to two, but if you have more cars in your train, you can carry more goods and maybe be more effective. Even though I said this game is kind of a streamlined uh, version of the Cran Rail games, that does not mean there's no strategy in this game. There is, but what's great about it is it does it in a lesser amount of time, in a cooler looking way, and easier to play. I was incredibly impressed with this. It plays well with two, three, and four. Um, and I like the trains. Now, they, 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 it's a little fiddly. Little fiddly moving the trains and the tracks. Uh, occasionally they fall off the tracks and it's, and it's easy to move the tracks and the board. Don't bump the board that much. But, man, I like how the, the cards were colorblind friendly. I like that the, every game is going to be different because of the different cards that you'll be dealt, the three commodities you're working with. And those cards are devilishly designed because... I need to deliver here and here. What's the best way to do that? And which one should I go to first? And how often do I upgrade? Because if I upgrade too much, yeah, I have a great train, but I spent basically points to do so. Splendid game. Highly recommend it. Spike. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah.